What's up guys, Chris Schwartz Edmiston here from Schwartz Edmiston Web Design. Today I'm doing something a little bit different. I'm gonna be talking about five tools that I use on almost every web design project. So the first one you might have heard of, uh, but it's the best stock photo source I have ever come across. There's other similar sites like Unsplash, um, but Pexels is by far my favorite. So they're completely free. You don't even have to credit the photographer. You can use them commercially on any web design project. So for example, if you want some cool nature photography, they have just incredible professional photos that you can use on your project. So it's super easy to download. You don't even have to sign up for the service. You can just download the photo that you want to use. It's a free download. And again, just goes right into your downloads and you don't even have to credit the person that took it. So the next tool that I want to talk about is called Pixlr. And this is an online photo editor. So it makes it really easy to quickly like rescale and darken images just in your web browser. So they have an editor and they also have this new Pixlr X. So I'm gonna do that one because it's a little bit faster to work with. So we downloaded this really huge file from Pexels and you can see that the dimensions are 5,184 by 3,456. So this is a huge photo and a huge file. And Squarespace recommends that the max width be 2,000 pixels wide for images. So I can just click this arrange button up here and resize the image and bring that down to a max width of 2000. So this is a really great way to quickly scale down images very fast in the browser. The other thing that you can do is sometimes your pictures are too bright and if you're gonna have a white heading uh, over the banner, then it won't show up as well. So this is a really great way to also just kind of darken up your photos very quickly too. Uh, and it has a lot of different color controls and brightness controls. So this is a really cool online and free editor to quickly edit your photos and scale them down to make them ready for Squarespace. Once you're done, I'll just okay those settings, click save, make sure your percent is on 100 so it's the highest quality, and you definitely want it to be a JPEG. And so now I'm going to click save, and it's automatically saved to my downloads. The next tool that I want to talk about is called Compressor.io and this is an online image compressor and it's the best one that I've ever come across. It's so simple to use and really quick too. Image compression is super important. When you download a picture from Pexels, they're huge files. They're like 5,000 pixels by 2,000 pixels and they're like 3 megabytes. So even if we scale the image down in Pixlr, that'll help a little bit, but it can't compare to actual image compression. So that's why this step with Compressor.io is so important. All you have to do is click to upload your file. This is the image that we scaled down with Pixlr. You can see before it's 3.62 megabytes, which is huge. You would never want your website to have an image that big because, I mean, you can see even just uploading it to this site, it takes a really long time to download and that can affect your SEO as well. Google likes really fast websites, so if you have huge images that are just making your site chug, uh, it's really gonna affect your search results too. So, extremely important that you use this with your projects. I use it on every single project. And look at this, this is amazing. It took a three megabyte file and it turned it into a 604 kilobyte file. Now generally you would want to aim for under 500 kilobytes, um, and there's some things we could do, like we could crop it vertically, so it was a little bit less tall vertically, because in Squarespace, like I, you would never really have a banner that would need to be this tall, so that would probably get us under that 500 kilobyte mark, but just the fact that it's able to take it from three megabytes and, and turn it all the way down to only 604 kilobytes is amazing. So then you just click here to download your file, and you get your file right there in the downloads. So the next tool that I want to share with you guys is this cssgradient.io. It's this online background gradient editor, and it makes it way easier than writing your own gradient code. You can play with the sliders here. There's a whole bunch of different settings. You can adjust the colors. You can adjust these sliders up here to determine where the colors lie. And uh, you can also choose between linear or radial. 
and you can choose the angle as well down here. So it makes it really, really easy to create background gradients. And then when you're done, all you have to do is come down here, copy your code, paste it into your Squarespace CSS editor, and you have a background gradient created pretty much for you. So the last tool I want to share with you guys is keyframes.app, and this is a really helpful tool for creating CSS animations. So all you have to do is come to keyframes.app, click use the web app, and you get this helpful timeline down here, which makes it way easier to uh, create the animations. And over here, you have all of the properties that can be animated. So it's just like your basic timeline animator. Down here, you have the duration. So how long do you want the animation to be? How many times is it going to be animated? So they have it set to infinite, but I only would want it to be playing once. You can set a delay on it and you can have the timing. So ease, ease in, ease out, ease in, out, or linear. So I'll just show you real quick how easy it is to make an animation. So I want to pretend this is gonna be my heading and I just want it to fade in and scale up a little bit when the page loads. So I'm gonna start the opacity at zero and I'm going to come to like 20% and I'm going to keep the opacity at zero. And the reason that I wanna do that is uh, sometimes the page catches a little bit or it takes a little bit longer to load. So I don't want my animation starting right from the beginning. Uh, I want it to be just at its default position and then start at 20%. So the other thing that I wanted to do at frame zero is have the scale uh, we'll have it be like 80% of what it's going to end up at. So here we're going to want the scale to be also 80%. And then at 100% when the animation is complete, I want the scale to be 1. And I want the opacity to be 1. And for the timing, uh, we'll just see how linear looks. So pretty cool, but I want my timing to be ease. Cool. So then all you have to do is show the output CSS. You can copy this code, put it into your Squarespace CSS editor, and then all you have to do is replace this dot element to animate with the code for the object that you want to animate. So for example, I could put H1 here in Squarespace and then all my H1 headings would have this really cool animation when the page loads. So makes it really, really easy to create keyframe animations very quickly. All right, guys, so that was my roundup of the top five tools I use on almost every web design project. Let me know if you're gonna start using any of these or if you already use any of these in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you guys. All right, guys, I will see you in the next one.